Welcome back to All Things ETH. My name is Aaron and on this channel we talk about all things Ethereum. We talk about projects, play to earn NFTs and price. And today I want to go through uh, a new strategy that I have in Axie Infinity uh, breeding in particular. I haven't bred for a long time because the pri price of AXS went up so high that it didn't make sense, especially for the, uh, the floor prices of Axies in the marketplace falling so much. But with season 20 just coming out in the last week, and we have Origins coming out after season 20. Um, I want to be in a place where I've got my team built up. I've got more uh, people wanting to be scholars. I've got uh, more scholars that I've liked to give more axes. So I'm going to transition some of the less uh, useful axes into their accounts to give them 40 energy or whatever linear energy looks like when Sky Mavis changes the uh, the the energy uh, based on how many axes you have in your inventory. And I want to make sure that they, I'm, I'm using pure axes when I'm breeding as well, because I think in uh, Origins in particular, the more, um, the, the higher the purity, the higher the value. And that's still the case, guys, for the most part. If you're breeding, um, you know, if you're, if you're making zero breed uh, pure axes, you're going to get more value out of them um, even today. I mean, that's that's always been the case for the most part. Some people have been you know, uh, uh, breeding entirely for some crazy metas out there, you know, getting plant parts with bug parts with, uh, you know, uh, aqua parts in a single axi. But like the Terminator build is the classic one, right? It, that's, that's reptile, that's bug in particular. Those two together have been amazing for some of the Terminators that have been uh, pretty ubiquitous without or throughout the last six months in different meta forms But right now I am going to be showing you how to uh, to uh, create Double nut rimp beasts that are back in meta. They were meta when I started back in August of 2021 They are back in meta now with new uh, Nerfs and buffs from season 20. So let's get on into that. All right. Let me show you my screen guys. I've already um, uh, started the process. So I've had this um, this double nut rimp with the cotton tail in particular for a while now. Um, this was one of my original teams. Uh, in fact, I think I bred this specific axi myself. Um, I could show you for sure, but I'm not going to take the time. But uh, one thing that you'll notice on my screen, we've got this uh, this cool. Um, uh, um, what do you call it? Oh my gosh, extension. So uh, I got rid of the Freaks Axi extension because I found that the Axi decks, um, this is the this is the one here. This one gives you a lot more control over what you're seeing. Um, you can get rid of a lot of these overlays if you want to. I like to use I like to see them in particular uh, the the EBC score, which is really nice for. Um, finding purity guys uh, obviously you have purity as well up here 91% on this guy 98% on this guy and uh, I just bought this one this morning and what I want to do right now is actually find a third because the best way to uh, to breed uh, consecutive axes on repeat guys is to get three parents rather than two so if you have three parents you can mix and match and and um, so if a baby is created you can't um, you can't breed a baby with its parents you have to or its brothers for that matter so you have to breed it with a another axis so that if you have these two over here and you want to breed them uh, together and then you'll need a third axis to breed them them together and then once that axis is made they're not brothers of the uh, the the previous so you can um, uh, anyway, there's video content out there that that explains that better. But having three axes will give you the chance of uh, you know continuing to breed um, without having to buy multiple parents or uh, getting into a place where you can't breed them with their siblings, right? So anyway, um, I'm going to jump into the marketplace and I'm going to show you what I'm going to uh, what I've done to get this uh, what I'm looking for specifically. So. I'm gonna click on beast. I'm gonna click on parts. I want a um, imp, Ronin, and this is just a, just a great scholar team. Like it's easy to use. Um, we're gonna get Nutcrack and Nutcrack, and then we're going to go down here and grab. Um, you want. 
your purity to be up here at six. Now I'm not gonna use the genetic purity slider. Some people do that. I just, um, I find it to be a little bit uh, less useful to be honest. And then breed count, I want this to be zero or one. Ah, come on. Burp. And slow this down to one here. <clears throat> awesome, so this bottom one here um, isn't bad, but uh, you know, I'm going to slide this all the way down to zero. I'm just going to start here because this is the best place to start. So, um, you can find some deals on one breeds. Like, there was one here that might be interesting, guys. Um, I saw just a second ago. Let me uh, refresh this. Now, one thing I don't love about this specific extension is it gives you more information that you need. Like, this pro thing down here drives me crazy. But it's not awful. So let's look at this guy. Um, he's a, he's got one breed underneath him, so I'm just looking for some like super cheap. I mean, we're already at eighty-seven dollars for a point zero three uh, zero breed. This was actually it was cheaper this morning when I first looked, and I actually bought the other one that I showed you a little bit ago for about eighty-five dollars. So let's go down to zero breeds because I'm not going to mess with that. I just, you want to look at it, see if, if there's any one breeds that are like really obviously cheap, um, grab them because they're, they're rare. But then I quickly go from one breed to zero breeds just, um, just because anything higher than uh, the bottom few rows is, uh, isn't going to give you enough, you know, margin to uh, to warrant a, a single breed so this one's interesting here it's got uh, Ronin three triple Ronin uh, double nutcrack as far as the breed uh, the um, impurities go it's got triple imp and it's got nutcrack cottontail and iguana now what I'm breeding with probably makes sense with this uh, Axie kisses and they are too and iguana would be unfortunate um, but not the worst thing considering it is a uh, generated energy and a 90 um, and a 60 shield. That's a pretty significant card. Um, it'll probably slow it down and make it less pure, but um, I think this is my this is my winner, guys, for... Um, it's a little bit expensive, more, more expensive than what I paid for the other one this morning, but I think it's in a range where it's acceptable. Let's look at a couple other these, uh, of these. See, I don't want anything R R1 that's uh, gonna be um, an issue like little owl would make this completely worthless if I was to breed one with little owl teal shell wouldn't be great um, this one's got too many impurities here I'm looking for something that has a lot of yellow here a lot of yellow orange whatever you want to call that color for um, purity guys in the 91 90 and above is really the sweet spot. I would love to get like a 96 to 98, but some of these are steals. So with an EBC score of 97, that gives us a higher ranking. And that EBC score really is like kind of the purity um, where it's got triple Ronin, double Nutcrack, double Imp. It's, it's just more of what you're looking for. Don't love that one with all the bird impurities over here. A lot of people bred... Uh, Ronin uh, Imp, Double Nut, uh, um, Beasts with bird parts to make them faster. And that was great for a couple seasons, but I'm really looking for some just super pure axes here that I want to create. So I think I don't want Tiny Turtle. That would be awful. I mean, Chomp isn't the worst, but not on a beast. <clears throat> All right, I think for this, for the sake of the the video and the timing, I'm just gonna spend the the hundred and four dollars to buy this guy here. Yeah, I think this is the way to go, guys. It's got really good parts. Um, the only couple impurities it has are these two, and that's pretty pretty great. I mean, Cottontail is what I have on one of the axes. I don't, don't mind honestly if I get Cottontail or uh, Nutcrack on any of my offspring here. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy this one. And what I really want to do here, guys, is 
is stock up on axes that I want to give to new scholars. So I'll do the same thing with plants as well as, and I think currently I'm not sure if I want to go with birds or aquas in particular, but I wanted to get started with beasts because I think they have the, uh, the ability to be played with more teams. In fact, I could pair these with dawns or, um, and you know, do a dawn mid lane with a, with a beast in the back lane. So in a faster dawn that I have, um, then, or even a faster reptile or bug in the middle, um, to kind of protect the beast and let the beast get all the high hitting cards. The, the combo, uh, multipliers right now for beasts in particular are so high that it just makes it so OP. And, uh, that's what we're going for today. So we'll let this finish up purchasing and then I'll show you what's what it's going to take to get you um you know your your what it's going to cost in slp and axs to breed this guy here all right so i've got the uh the new beast in my inventory guys and so i'm going to take uh i'm going to open up the my original guy here and i'm going to go hit the breed button and then i'm going to select which other one i want to breed with and then it's going to pop up with what I need to spend in order to breed these two. So I need 1800 SLP for two zero breeds to mate. And then I'm going to need half an AXS to, to make the process happen. So what I'm going to do is go to, uh, to my Katana interface. I'm going to unstake some of my, uh, my SLP because I've got that staked in here. I'm not going to hit max. I'm actually going to delete quite a bit of this. In fact, I'm going to delete 18 and put in two zeros here because I know I have enough SLP in this amount to get me started here. And this will take a little bit of a process, so I'll probably fast forward through this for you guys. All right, so I've gotten, I've unstaked some LP here. It's what's showing up right here. I'm going over to the pooling and I'm going to manage this and I'm going to remove this and that's going to give me enough SLP to, to breed because I have some left over in my account already. And then, so I'll remove this, I hit max and remove, confirm, I've run out of Ronin transactions because I've been doing a lot of uh, moving things around today. I actually do every day. I, I typically unstake or uh, restake some of my um, my Ron claimed Ron and and uh, and stake that into the Ron Weth pool. So just a lot going on, and I usually tip, typically use up my my Ron for the day. My my uh, not my Ron for the day, but my free transactions for the for the day pretty quickly as well as these, uh, um, you know, I'm restaking my AXS tokens uh, at least once a week, and I did that today already. So what I'm gonna do is unstake one here. I could just do 0.5, and maybe I'll just do 0.5 for the sake of this video. Oops, 0.5, unstake. The Ron transactions are so little, it's, it's pennies guys, if that. So it really doesn't cost me anything to unstake here and I can do it again if I need to for another, um, for another breeding session, which I will do. Looks like I've got that 0.5 AXS available. All right, let's go back to the marketplace <clears throat> or to my account. Hit the breed button again. We've got the SLP we need. We've got the, uh, the AXS we need. So I'm going to put these two together. And uh, before I do this, you know what? One thing I could check is uh, some of those, um, you know, breed, um, you know, calculators out there. So let's, let's look that up. Let's go to um, Axie Breed Simulator. All right, so we're gonna use the uh, the the free kitties uh, axi calculator here. We're gonna use uh, we're gonna go to the IDs of my axes here. Grab the idea from this one. 
grab the ID from the other one. Copy those in. And this just gives you a likelihood of what's going to happen here. So you have a 96% chance of getting Nutcracker, 3% chance of Axie Kiss, 100% Ronin, 96% Imp. I'm a little bit worried about the 3% chance of Scaly Spoon, but that's a will, you know, something I'm willing to get. And then a 50% Nut Cottontail or a 46% Nutcrack. And that is, uh, that's pretty good odds there. I'm going to go ahead and go with this. Ears and eyes, I'm not terribly worried about. I'm, you know, a fast, um, you know, if I get a bird part in the ears or eyes, it will be faster. It will be good for season 20 in particular. I have no idea what it's going to look like in, um, in, uh, you know, origin, but I'm willing to risk that for now. And so let's go ahead and give this a shot, guys. I won't be able to show you for another five days though because that's how long it takes to wait for breeds to happen but at least I'm able to do this right now. So let's go grab this guy and let's breed. It cost me a transaction here. Confirm that and gotta love that. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, guys. <laughs> I just realized that we're breeding on Valentine's Day, so that's fun. All right, so I'm going to go to my activities. We should have an egg in my inventory very soon. It'll probably take a minute to do so. But uh, So that's the process of starting your uh, breeding farm in 2022. I hope you like what you see guys. I'll show you the result in about five days and uh, right now I'm going to be creating these four new scholars. So uh, scholars out there, let's hit 2,000 subscribers so that I can give away new, uh, new teams to new scholars. So one thing I wanted to show you real quick is the actual cost of breeding these two together. So let's, let's calculate what 1800 SLP, uh, so SLP right now at the time of this recording is at, uh, let's see. SLP is currently at 2.7 cents, so 2.7, that's uh, $48 right now for that, plus um, the half of an AXS, which is at $28, so 48.6, plus the 28.35, or 23, you're looking at $76 for the creation of this new Axie and immediately that's going to put you in a place of profit if you get the parts that you want. Now if it's if it's got lower uh, purity, if it's got some of the weird uh, you know R2 and R3 uh, genes you're going to or um, the recessive um, weird modification you're gonna lose out on some of that money but for the most part you should be able to get a decent Axie at this level. So I just paid $100, $100 for this, uh, you know, uh, particular Axie that has all these um, great parts in it. And if if I mix this one with this one and we don't get Iguana or Scaly Spoon, we should have a Axie that will cost at least $100 or sell for at least $100 uh, currently um, in the marketplace. And so for, uh, you know, the cost of $76 to create it, we could sell it for a 25% profit in the marketplace as soon as it's done being crafted in five days. So um, just that's that's the current markup that you're getting from these axes in particular. If you can find stuff like this, guys, I highly recommend doing it because you're going to make a profit or you're going to give them to scholars that are going to use them for a while. And what if what what I'm actually banking on is actually the price of axes going up when Origins comes into effect. So we could see a floor price of $100 for this specific axie go up all the way to two or $300, which would uh, triple the, the resources that I put into it. So with that, guys, thank you so much for watching and God bless.